thank you for joining us. As I look across uh, the screen, I see, you know, so many of our brethren also from Hyderabad and also from other parts of India. I'd like to uh, always uh, notice our brethren from uh, other areas also joining us. We have our brethren from Mumbai. Uh, I can see Moni from Chennai. And of course, Amio and his family from Bangladesh. We can see Vincent Om Prakash from the Delhi region. And uh, I hope I have not missed out any other areas. Uh, I know Sikinda was in Karnul, but now Karnul has merged with Hyderabad. <laughs> so it's wonderful to have him here in Hyderabad. Uh, some of you may be wondering about Sheila Roach, who used to join us very often. Uh, but recently I got a message saying that she is experiencing a lot of uh, internet issues. And she tends to uh, go on to YouTube, which makes it a little easier for her, for her to uh, you know, attend the entire service. And all of you who may be joining on YouTube, uh, thank you for taking the time to be with us this morning as we worship uh, and the fellowship together as a spiritual family. Well, uh, as we get into the message, I was just thinking to myself, today is 14 days after we celebrated the re resurrection. Uh, so that tells us we are still in the what we can say, or what we can call the Easter season or the resurrection season, according to our worship calendar. Uh, so we go to 40 days after the resurrection. And you remember a momentous event takes place on the, uh, after 40 days, the ascension of Jesus into heaven. And then 50 days after the resurrection, you remember what happens. There is a special festival celebrated on that occasion. It is called the Day of Pentecost. And that was the day when the Holy Spirit descended upon all, you know, flesh. And uh, uh, the Holy Spirit then resides with us, lives with us. Well, as we continue to celebrate the Easter resurrection season, Last, uh, you know, the, on the resurrection day, we heard Sachin preach to us. He told us how the resurrection changes uh, and transforms us as the people of God. And then last week, we had Joshila preach to us, telling us how Jesus touches our lives and how he specifically touched certain important lives immediately after the resurrection, bringing them to faith and increasing their faith indeed. Now, today in the readings, we read how Jesus showed his disciples uh, that he was the one who fulfilled all those prophecies written in the Old Testament. We call them messianic prophecies. And then he says something very significant, something that impacted the lives of all the disciples, continuing to impact the lives of God's people right through the ages for 2000 years now, including all of us. And that is what I want to focus on today. When he says in, as we read, in Luke chapter 24, he said, you are witnesses of these things. He was speaking to the disciples, telling them that they were witnesses. But in one sense, he was speaking right across into the ages, into our day today, telling us that we are also witnesses for him. Now, who is a witness? A witness is someone who has something to say about what happened. A witness is a person who tells the truth of what he saw. And that's the reason why we have witnesses in court. You remember that 
uh, lawyers and courts will call for a witness and they will be asked to relate what actually happened. And so they become a witness to the event that took place. And so the disciples became witnesses to Jesus, what happened to him, what happened, of course, after the crucifixion and resurrection. And they went on to witness Jesus and his resurrection. And thus began a movement, a powerful movement, began very small like a mustard seed, but slowly it began to grow and grow. And today we call that movement Christianity. Do you know how many people believe that Jesus rose again? The estimate is around 2.5 billion people today on the face of this earth believe that Jesus rose again because of the witness of the apostles and right through the ages, we also become witnesses for Jesus. Uh, but the question we have to ask is, is this true? I mean, you remember a witness is someone who testifies to the truth of what actually happened. Is it true that Jesus was really alive after he was crucified? If he wasn't, obviously the disciples were believing in a lie. The, the disciples were not telling the truth. Maybe they were deceived and they were deceiving people. And they will become false witnesses if they are saying something that is not true. And more importantly, if we believe Jesus rose again and we witness to the world today around us that Jesus is alive. And if that is not true, then we also become false witnesses. So I want to ask this question, you know. In the next few moments, as we examine this, how do you know that the resurrection really took place? How do you know that Jesus, you know, was resurrected from the dead? Is it true that Jesus came alive after three days in the grave? I want to examine that for just a moment. And then I want to move towards as we conclude something important for us to take away today as we understand the importance of Christ's resurrection. Now, how do we know that Jesus was resurrected? Now, the theologians and the experts who studied this bring in two evidences. One is called an internal evidence. The other is called the external evidence. What is the internal evidence? The internal evidence is basically what the Bible says, right? Uh, that is internal to the belief system. We believe the Bible is true and the Bible says Jesus was resurrected. But the sad thing is there are many who don't believe in the Bible today. They think that the Bible is a myth. They think that the Bible is filled with false stories. Some even say that Jesus never existed. He was never a historical figure. And then some even say that Jesus didn't die. Even, even if he was alive, he didn't die. He actually came to India. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful to know that Jesus came to India? <laughs> well, it is even more wonderful that he was actually, you know, resurrected. Some people believe that maybe the body was stolen or the disciples concocted a lie. They say that the resurrection is a conspiracy theory. You know, they say that because they believe that the disciples were self hypnotized and they started believing in something that was not true. And so many people don't believe in the internal evidence of the resurrection of Jesus. Now, if there are people who struggle with that evidence, 
Well, what about the external evidence? What is an external evidence? The external evidence is exactly what it says. We believe we, we uh, can look at evidence from external sources, external to the Bible. You see, sources other than the New Testament that proves indeed that Jesus was resurrected. Uh, now, in an article that I was reading, written by uh, a theologian, and his name is C. Michael Patton, he talks about this external evidence. And he basically brings four external evidences. And obviously, I don't have time to study, you know, to uh, discuss all of them with you today. But I want to go to one very important external evidence. But before I do that, I'm going to just relate to you what are the uh, four external evidences. One is called preservation of the documents. The second one is archaeology. The third one is extra biblical attestations. And fourth one, survival in a hostile environment. Let me just very quickly uh, explain to you what these four mean, and then I will focus on the fourth one a little bit more. The first one, the first external evidence is preservation of the documents. This is basically to tell us that the manuscripts that we have, the translations of the Bible that we have, is reliable. The manuscript evidence, the fact that the Bible has many manuscripts to verify that what is written in the Bible is, is strong, is true, is real, right? Remember, we must remember that all these matters that were written were written within the generation of the events taking place. In other words, there was no time for any legendary material to be inserted. So that is what we call as preservation of the document, all right? Documentary evidence that Jesus uh, what the, the fact that Jesus lived, died, and was resurrected is true, as recorded in the Bible. Let's go to the second one, archaeology. You know, archaeological findings have proved and confirmed that the scriptures we have today is historically accurate. You might remember the Qumran, uh, you know, documents. Uh, that was found and some of the parchments that we found very clearly showed that the uh, the book of Isaiah was accurate according to those manuscripts. So archaeological findings confirm that, you know, what we have as the Bible today is accurate. Uh, I let me tell you about Sir William Ramsey. Sir William Ramsey uh, was regarded as one of the greatest archaeologists. And he was an atheist. He didn't believe in God. And he actually set out to disprove the historical accuracy of the Bible. But when he was researching and he was trying to disprove the Bible, he very closely researched the book of Luke and the book of Acts. And remember, Acts was written by Luke. And through his findings, he actually changed his mind. He became a firm defender of Christianity and the historical accuracy of the gospel accounts. So that is a uh, the external evidence of archaeology. Let me go to the third one, extra biblical attestations. Do you know that there are at least 39 extra biblical sources attest to more than 100 facts regarding the life and teachings of Jesus? We can, we can have, you know, attestations by, written by other authors about the life and teachings of Jesus. 
which indeed was accurately recorded in the scriptures. And of course, this includes some of the early fathers, but nevertheless, this proves the accuracy of the Bible. Now I'm going to the fourth one, which is called survival in a hostile environment. This, this external evidence tells us that Christianity became or rather was established in great, with great difficulty when, when the faith began to spread by the apostles, the disciples faced many, many difficulties. And the fact that the faith survived in the first century in, is indeed a, mir a miracle. And we were just, uh, you know, focusing on the miracles of Jesus. And the fact that today we have a faith called Christianity is actually, uh, you know, one of the greatest miracles because there was every attempt made to stop this faith spreading. There was every attempt made to kill those people who were spreading this so-called gospel of Jesus and the fact that Jesus was alive. The opposition was tremendous. It was vicious and brutal. Like I said, every attempt was made to stamp out the faith. For example, there was religious opposition. If you remember, as we read in the scriptures, even as we saw in the video, of how when Jesus, uh, you know, healed that old lady and straightened her back, some of the religious teachers came and said, well, why are you doing this? They were trying to oppose Jesus. So there was tremendous religious opposition against the faith. The Jews hated Jesus. And of course, we know they had him killed. Nobody wanted his teachings to survive. And the fact that the faith survived, in spite of the, Jew, the Jewish leadership trying to stamp it out is a miracle in itself. Then what about the opposition by the government? The Roman Empire that ruled at that time. They only wanted the emperor to be worshipped. If anybody worshipped anybody else other than the emperor, they were persecuted. You know, and... Uh, uh, those who believed in Jesus were, some of them were fed to the lions in a Colosseum. Some of them were rounded up and killed. Some of them were torn apart by dogs. Some of them were burnt alive as human torches. Peter was crucified. And as history says, Peter was crucified upside down because he felt you know, that he was not worthy to be crucified as his Lord. We have reports, historical reports, that the Apostle Paul was probably beheaded. Some of them, many Christians were forced to live in catacombs. Catacombs are where the dead were buried. Some, many were thrown in prison and some stoned to death, to, to death like Stephen. Some of them were accused of drinking blood because they performed the communion ritual. And some of them told that, you know, they were drinking blood. So there was tremendous opposition to Christianity, to the faith in Jesus. How could it survive? How could people continue to believe when so much opposition existed? And there was another fact. The fact that people continue to believe uh, is a miracle by itself. Now, why did they believe? Because Jesus was alive. They saw Jesus. Jesus appeared to them. Jesus touched them. Teach Jesus transformed their lives. That is why they continue to believe. Now, if, uh, if the government wanted to completely stamp out the Christian religion, all they had to do was to produce a body. And do you think the Roman Empire with, with its power could not do that? Couldn't they 
hunt down the disciples if indeed his body was stolen couldn't the roman authorities very quickly find out the the, the body was stolen all they had to do was produce a dead body a dead body of jesus and the entire faith would fall the entire faith would be proved false right but nobody nobody could prove the resurrection to be fake why because it was true it was true and that is why christianity survived and continued to grow and grow and grow right why were they not able to stamp out christianity because jesus kept appearing to so many after the resurrection people knew they saw him they spoke with him right he was indeed alive at one time jesus came and ate and if you could say that one of the favorite foods of jesus was grilled fish <laughs> if you like grilled fish jesus ate it jesus talked to his disciples he allowed them to touch him like thomas did he showed them their scars and he taught them from the scriptures that he was indeed the messiah that moses and isaiah and jeremiah spoke about he was real he was not a ghost that's why people could not stop believing in him even if they were persecuted people could not stop believing in jesus according to the scriptures he appeared at least 10 times to the disciples after his resurrection and not just the immediate disciples he appeared to so many others as it is written in the book of 1 corinthians chapter 15 reading in verse 6 it says then he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time most of whom are still alive though some have fallen asleep so when this was being written and you remember the apostle paul was writing this he was saying that some of these 500 people who saw jesus are still alive people could go and verify they could go and talk to him isn't it so jesus was alive it was not a conspiracy theory it was not fake it was not mythology it was that real thing a real event and that is why jesus says be my witnesses you are my witnesses let me read to you a paragraph from the author gregory boyd he he writes in a book that he authored titled letters from a skeptic this is what he says christianity was born in a very hostile environment the leaders of judaism in the first century saw christianity christianity as a pernicious cult and would have loved to see it stamped out and this would have been easy to do if the cult had been based on fabrications uh he goes on to say why just bring forth the body of the slain jesus would have been sufficient to extinguish christianity once and for all in spite of this however christianity exploded even those who remained opposed to christianity did not deny that jesus did miracles and did not deny that his tomb was empty is that wonderful to know that though there was so much persecution people remained faithful because what they saw was real they were not hallucinating they were not just dreaming they actually saw the real jesus resurrected and alive michael patton in uh, who, to whose uh, article I, i referred he says the following those who deny the resurrection do so not on the basis of the evidence but because they have other presuppositions that won't allow them to believe 
the evidence is simply too strong. That is what Patton says. That those who refuse to believe that Jesus is alive cannot do that based on evidence because the evidence is simply too strong that Jesus indeed was alive. And so, brethren, you are witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus. You may not have seen it, but we have reliable historical evidence that Jesus indeed was alive, that the resurrection is real. And that is why the Apostle John, the only apostle who lived uh, beyond all the other apostles in his epistle, 1 John chapter 1, this is what he writes. And he writes with absolute certainty. Notice how, what he says in 1 John chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testify to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you that uh, what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship with the, is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. John is telling us that he has seen and touched and handled the word of life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Right? And he goes on to say, by believing, we are having fellowship with the disciples. So we are just as, men, as much as witnesses like the disciples were. Today we are those witnesses. And that is what John is telling us. And our fellowship is not just with the disciples. Our fellowship is also with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's, what's, that's the declaration of John. We believe, brethren, because the evidence of the resurrection is simply too strong. As we conclude, brethren, let me bring you a very important thought. I'd like you to listen carefully. Today, we are facing a similar situation, aren't we? Today, Christianity is once again under attack. Persecution is increasing against Christianity. Unbelief in Christianity is beginning to mushroom. More and more people are becoming atheists. Many have come to discredit the Bible, you know, time and time again. And yet, in spite of the fact that we are coming under attack. Do you know that Christianity is actually increasing? There are more and more people coming to believe and having faith in Christ. I heard about Iran, that the church in Iran is just growing in spite of the fact that Christianity is outlawed by the government. They don't allow you to practice they hunt you down. Even if you have a house church, they will hunt you down and close it. And yet, more and more, especially in Iran, are coming to believe in Jesus Christ. How about China? China, which is a communist state, and they are beginning to, you know, uh, discredit Christianity and are persecuting those and so the church has gone underground. And I heard, even though they are being persecuted, that the church is underground. There are more than 100 million Christians in China, in spite of the fact that they are being persecuted. Just like in Rome, they are being persecuted. Why, brother? Why is it that so many people believe in Jesus in spite of persecution? May I say something which might shock you? Is it possible that Jesus is appearing to some of them? 
Now, I don't mean to say that Jesus is, you know, appearing in a, you know, in a, in a manner which can be, you know, sometimes fake. No. But there are people who are testifying to the fact that they indeed have experienced Jesus. And may I say, brethren, you and I have experienced Jesus. Is it possible that Jesus is appearing to us through healings, through the strength he gives us to face persecution, through the strength he gives us to face suffering? And I know that many of us are suffering. Is it possible that the risen Jesus is appearing to all of us in different ways to help us to believe and to help us to increase our faith? And to that extent, may I say, what a privilege it is to witness for Jesus today. We believe in a real Jesus, in an alive Jesus, and he's appearing to us. I know he's appearing to some in Iran, you know, visually, in a way, I, I cannot testify to that, but in ways that is increasing their faith and they're willing to die for Jesus. Why would one want to die? Was something that is fake. Yes brethren. The risen Jesus. Is appearing. And let us be his witnesses. In spite of the hardships. And the difficulties. Let us continue to be a witness for Jesus. Someday. Wouldn't it be wonderful. To hear Jesus tell us. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Well done. For being my witness in a very difficult time. Let's look forward to that. And as we do, may your faith be strong. May you believe. And by believing, may you be a witness for Jesus Christ. And may you bring the good news that there is life in Jesus Christ our Lord. God bless you all.